I thought uh, that there would be very little choice, um, and uh, I um, made a little announcement to the. Uh, I made a little announcement to the uh, newly arrived students whether anyone would be interested, only expecting a handful to come up. But in fact, half the student body uh, <laughs> volunteered. And so literally about 70, or, you know, about 70 of the, the class. And it really was an awful lot just instinct. I had about 10 minutes with each of them. I did want to get a mix of male, female. Um, I, I did want to get a different backgrounds, ages. Um, uh, sort of try to reflect the student body in, in terms of the makeup, so that it was a little microcosm. But it was really just feeling uh, who would be people that would stay with stay the course, who would be willing to hang in when things would get bad, because it's, you know sooner or later you know the the, the 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 thrill of being in front of the camera wears off. In fact, incredibly quickly. <laughs> and um, I, I wanted people that would you know that would would, would stay there and. Uh, and I, I think a lot of it was just my instinct and sort of kind of a gut reaction. And you know, I was incredibly fortunate with the with the seven I found. And I'm, and I would like to return the uh, the kind words. I, I absolutely understand how difficult this has been uh, to be in front of the camera. I never, if I was a medical student, ever would have volunteered. And I, I think, and I think they've been extraordinarily candid. And and I, I really feel that it's been a great privilege to have uh, shared just a little fragment of their, of their lives over the last 20 years. Paula, given the response to, that's for me, the, given the response to Doctor's Diaries and the rest of the series, um, but also considering the resources that were required to make this series, um, do you think NOVA would produce another long-term type of project like this? Uh, times have changed in television, too. And I, I, I think it would be very difficult to get the resources to do something like this again. Um, and also, it, the filming with hospital patients is so much more restrictive now that honestly, I just, and our rights requirements um, are so much more restrictive that I, I don't actually believe that it could be done now. I mean, I know that um, there's kind of a new, uh, there's a new film being made at Mass General, um, kind of like Hopkins 24-7, um, which I think will be great. but. This is being made by a network, and they have a lot more money than we do. So I think this would be very, very, very tough uh, to do again. And you know, in those days, we were very confident that we would continue on and on and on. And uh, you know, we we believed in our own, you know, eternal life. And um, the television environment has changed so radically that I don't think that we have that conf same confidence anymore. So the answer is kind of no. <laughs> I'm very glad that we did it. I mean, I, I'm very proud of it, but uh, I, I think it would be very tough to do it again. Right. And there's a question on this side of the room. I don't know. I think part of, part of it really depends on, um, on how the show does next week and the week after, so you should really like tell everyone you know <laughs> about it. Um, because, um, you know, it, it depends whether, whether my station, WGBH, feels it's commercially viable in order to make them available again. I mean, I think they're a tremendous resource, and I think we really have to think of how, um, how we want to use them um, carefully, but I, I think it, you know, unfortunately, it really does depend to some extent on how well the program does next week. If it does very well, um, then I think that there are a lot of possibilities. So let's hope. Tell everyone. <laughs> Set their DVRs. And there's a question at the back of the room. Yes. Th uh, first, thank you for all that you've done to help us understand your development and growth into physicianhood. Um, as a medical educator, I am uh, very aware of your having entered medical school when the new pathway was very young. <laughs> and one of the questions that I am often asked is, so did the curriculum at Harvard Medical School did a, make a difference? How did tutorial experiences uh, work in those first two years of basic sciences contribute to your learning? And has there been any lasting impact of that, at that time, very new curriculum, and a curriculum that much of the rest of the world has looked at, tried to emulate, and tried to understand whether or not it was worth it all? 
And you're the people who can tell us whether or not it was worth it all. So I'd be interested in your perspective at this point. So I still remember some of the cases from first year medical school. I remember a case of tattoo, there was some like tattoo thing and the, the tattoo went into the macrophage and yet, am I there at Harvard Medical School? Do you guys have that case? Okay, so there was like some clue. So I think that, um, and I, I actually consider myself a medical educator as well, I mean not a, prof not a PhD sort of only medical educator, but I do a lot of medical education. I think that the case-based method is something that really helps hone and makes you want to learn and excite you and bring some sort of emotional connection to the learning you're doing. And I think that if there are any neuroscientists here, I think that they would tell you that when you have an emotion, emotions heighten your memory. And so maybe there is something to it. I, I don't know. It was very pleasurable. I learned a lot about the people. It is sort of a model of how you learn sort of over and over and over again in medicine. So I would say that I would do it again that way, but I actually n wasn't in the other way, so I don't know, have anything to compare to. I, I uh, was not sure it was altogether a success. Um, I thought that fundamentally what one wants of a doctor getting out of medical school is a humongous amount of um, learning. And the uh, new pathway when we started was brand new and uh, relatively disorganized, and I, I think a reasonable amount f probably fell through the cracks. My guess is uh, that with some years of experience to, to work on it, that many of those kinks have been ironed out. But I think that um, you're, you're not going to be able to get all the way um, to the other end of medical training as a doctor without having a lot of face time with patients. And it, it isn't necessarily the case that in the first or second year of medical school it needs to be that way. I don't, I don't think. Um, I, I enjoyed the uh, I, I enjoyed the the kind of story aspect and the the uh, the kind of investigative aspect of looking into cases at what in the early years, um, but I have to say I was really really anxious about the volume of stuff that I was being required to learn, and I think it, in some ways it would really have been easier to have learned a huge volume um, if it had been taught in ways that other courses that I'd already taken, uh, where I was similarly trying to learn a massive volume of new information, were presented, which is that it's, it's fairly well organized, and it's sort of say, here it is, here, you know, start to read it, take your notes, use your flashcards, get through it, and know it. And I think that is actually what's needed of medical students. So, um, yeah, I have mixed feelings. I, I would also say that it, not necessarily the new pathway, but some of the choices about how much time we spent on different topics, like, we spent six weeks on genetics and embryology. We spent eight weeks on anatomy and physiology. I, even now, I, like, I never, did, I never did the arm, you know? And <laughs> like, even now, I never really remember the bones in the red. You know, I, so I think that some of the choices were made not necessarily a new pathway, but that restricted anatomy. I mean, Jay's a psychiatrist. He probably doesn't need anatomy. And but I'm not sure he needs embryology either. But uh, <laughs> um, but I so I think some of the you know these heavy duty sciences, genetics is really good for science. But learning the reflips that I learned in medical school never really helped. Whereas learning the arm and the hand would have been more helpful. But that's not necessarily new path. Well, maybe it is new pathway choices. So. Yeah. 